Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to our free webinar, Headache and uh, Ayurvedic Perspective, organized by Nafi Academy. Tonight, we have the privilege of having our esteemed guest speaker, Dr. Vasha Santosh, to share her wisdom and insights on this topic. Dr. Vasha is a qualified Ayurvedic physician from India's Pune University and has practiced in Singapore for eight years. And without further ado, Dr. Vasha, please. Thank you, Ken. Good evening, everyone. Let's uh, dive into the topic without wasting any time. As always, for Ayurveda, let's invoke the blessings of the Lord of Ayurveda, Lord Dhanvantari, and begin our session for this evening. Om Shri Dhanvantaraye Namaha. May the words that flow off this mouth be in accordance with the Shastra and the science. Headache. Just now I was reading a message from one of the participants, Aryan, saying, Thank you for selecting this topic. Many of us do suffer from it. Thank you, Aryan, for joining. Yes, indeed. It's Probably everyone suffers at some point in life with this symptom called as headache. And it's so much common that sometimes um, if we have to confront an um, mm. unwanted person, we oh, use oh, what a headache. Okay, so we have to now have a little discipline of being ourselves uh, muted throughout so that we don't cause any nuisance to the flow of the thought and the talk. I'm just going to mute you all now. I try each time to have an interactive session so I don't permanently mute, but mm, it doesn't um, happen. Hopefully, uh, it will happen one day where I can just leave that freedom to unmute yourselves to talk to me uh, when the talk is in progress. Anyways, nevertheless, now all are in mute position. If you have any questions, you can post it in the chat box or you can see the white box Q&A session. You can post your questions over there. Uh, towards the end of the session, I'll be taking all the questions and try to answer them with best of my knowledge. Okay. So we were seeing this headache topic. It's like so much common and it's become like a synonym to even an unwanted person is what I'm saying. We, when a person is, so we have somebody still unmuted. Yeah. Can everyone remain muted please? Uh, Salina Ji, please remain unmuted throughout. It is... Let me just figure out. Okay. Yes, so coming back to this particular topic where so many of us suffer, many of us have at least experienced it once in a lifetime. But before we go ahead, let's see what is the scope of today's um, talk. So there could be headaches, you know, there are 150 types of headache and there are several reasons. So some headaches, which could be because of a head injury, or let's say there is a secondary reason, something like a hypertension, or there is a tumor or some aneurysm. We are not going to deal with those aspects. So those need um, serious medical attention investigations needed. So those uh, types of headache we would not be seeing. Then what is the scope? These are some of the common uh, reasons that day to day life, in day to day life, which we suffer. Let me just begin my presentation. That would be more easier and faster. So uh, this uh, aspect where we we can feel it as a sudden pain in the head, which might last maybe uh, just for a few minutes, or maybe it can take few hours, or sometimes it can take few days 
um, to subside. So what kind of headaches are these? Um, everybody says I'm having a headache. Then it becomes the doctor's job to investigate what kind of headache it is, because there are a few types of it. What could be the probable cause for it? And then try to eliminate that cause. That would be the ideal solution. But many times um, to identify a cause can take a long time. Sometimes it's a poor history or sometimes the patient is not so, um, he's not so vocal of um, giving his life history. So it takes some time, time. But we are going to talk these uh, few kinds of headache, like uh, let's say example, uh, a sinus headache. So like those people who have, you know, they begin their morning with 10, 30, 40 sneezes and they feel maybe this portion is full, like the frontal sinuses, or sometimes there's a pain behind the cheekbones or there is a pain at the eyes. So there are different air pockets over there. The frontal sinuses or the maxillary sinuses are full or the ethmoid sinuses are full. So these kind where there is a specific space, uh, place where the headache would be. So those are called sinus headaches. So then if such kind of a headache is there and if you have identified that the person is up, then we need to address the sinus aspect first. So uh, that could involve so many kinds of different medicines. So unless the cause or the type is identified, we cannot progress into a treatment. So person might say as a symptom only headache, but that headache could be in so many versions, so many meanings from a dull aching pain to maybe a throbbing pain, pounding pain. You feel that you just don't want anybody around you. Um, you just want to probably be in a dark room. You can't face a light or you don't want anybody to talk and you might scream at them and say, just shut up, put your mouth and sit quiet. May I have some silence in this space? You just, or sometimes you, know, it just, um, you have to just leave your office and go back to rest. You can't work anymore. So, so many ways that, so the presenting symptom can be a headache, but the variety in that differs from a person to person. For some people, it might just be some once a while affair, but for some people, it could be a day-to-day -day affair as well. So we have to first identify, as I said. So we saw this, how is a um, sinus kind of a headache? Then this, uh, the cluster headache. So this is actually a very severe type of a headache where you feel a uh, throbbing, uh, uh, very pounding pain, in a, just behind their eyes. And why it is a uh, cluster kind? Because it can come multiple times in a day. And there would be some reasons uh, that could act as a trigger factor. And then again, it would be in for maybe like half an hour to one hour, then it would subside. And then again, after a few hours, it can come. So it will have some pockets in a day and it might take a few days for it to subside. So this is one of a very severe kind of a headache. Then the other part comes is like a tension headache. The tension headaches are generally mild to moderate and they, they are just at your forehead level and it's like a band squeezing. It could be uh, some immediate anxiety that's coming, immediate stress that is coming or uh, probably uh, the lifestyle is not good. But for all of this, there's going to be a lifestyle issue, which we are going to see in a great detail. So like why a headache would come. And the worst and the most common type is this a migraine kind of a headache where one-sided pain you might get and it's from moderate to severe. It's going to be a pounding headache. And sometimes a person has to throw up to feel better but uh, or sometimes it's just that the nausea is so bad a person lands up in throwing up and he may not get better also so this is a again a very fairly commonly seen uh, headache so these are like um, rep i'm just representing like what is the scope of what are we referring today uh, because 
something like let's say a tumor over there or let's say you've met uh, with a road accident or you have just slipped and fallen down but your head has hit badly so all these the trauma cases underlying some diseases this won't be the scope of today's talk you uh, it's going to be very difficult because if i'm going to say that then everybody will um, start thinking oh do i have a tumor or oh, maybe i have this maybe i have that and half of with the imagination you know you will diagnose it yourself and uh, not reach also the doctor so please don't use this as a knowledge to diagnose for yourself and get panicked or scared and imagine things which have not yet reached you so take this more as a uh, information level and um, what precautions you can take so that you don't get into the situation but when you are in a situation um, it's good to see um, ayurveda doctor uh, for these kinds of headache uh, so at the primary level and if the doctor has to refer to identify something different then it's all together a different story let's go ahead so just to represent something like if we have a i don't know how a person is managing to unmute even and i have muted it's a mystery for me now that when i have muted everyone and not allowing to mute how anyways okay so what we are going to do over here now is we are going to talk of all kinds of headache but we are going to take as a reference point as migraine because that gets into common but when we see one kind of a headache it's easier to identify ourselves with the other types of headaches too uh, which are i can say like a primary kind of a headache and not um those head injury trauma cases uh, kind of a secondary uh, kind of a head so in ayurveda do we have reference for headaches yes we do have shira is the word for head and shula means pain so shira shula is what the reference we get in ayurveda and this shira shula in ayurveda there are couple of types of shira shula like as how we have seen in the modern terms that we could understand so something is called as a surya varta kind of a shira shula something is called as ardhav bheda kind of shira shula but i don't want to complicate this talk by using too much of sanskrit which is um, the original words in what ayurveda describes or writes its complete medical science it's beautiful poetic way and one must have a chance to just admire like how in those days the rishis of the yo have put the whole science into poetic and in a very nice cryptic language and how compactness has sanskrit like within one verse so much is being told but now again that's not the scope because we are not uh, only ayurveda physicians uh, in this group today so let's take again coming back to the language that all of us can understand so this particular headache what would be the symptom over here like uh, as it describes like it's a, a one sided it can be at surya varta that means at the onset of the day break and the dawn it might start and as the sun rises higher and higher the pain escalates and then when the sun is um, setting down the pain uh, lowers down so it comes at the day break goes at the dusk so from dawn to dusk it peaks at the noon time when the sun is at the highest potential so and sometimes people um, they they get some visual lights uh, some visual changes seen uh, as a precursor to this headache and they say okay i'm seeing some aura so from which they can um, uh, say that okay the migraine attack might come and um, predominantly again it's going to be a bad lifestyle only where 
a person is not sleeping well. There's a lot of stress and anxiety. A particular thought is like, you know, stuck in the mind and like a broken record. It keeps on playing the same thing and the same thought and which can lead to a headache. Um, some people are addicted to a lot of tea and coffee and uh, under the name of a healthy drink, let's say people say, okay, green tea is healthy and they keep on sipping green tea throughout. Um, coffee is, uh, you know, key to keep me awake at work, I keep on drinking coffee. So we have got such reasons, but these could be actually the trigger factors. And mostly it comes through a very bad uh, meal system. Like in the name of, again, health, um, people think they are eating healthy because there's so much of misinformation. And when Ayurveda comes in the picture with Ayurvedic rules and regulations, the diet part is completely opposite of that of our understanding. So those who want to know uh, more on their Ayurveda diet, um, after two more talks, we have the Ayurveda diet aspect talk also. And I wish all of you can join that time to have this perspective of uh, what does Ayurveda talk exactly on the, what is right to it and what is not right to it? What perspective we should have? Because always we hear only, okay, junk food or oily food, but what is it that we can eat in reality? So that we'll see two talks from now onwards. So in the series, we are having four talks. We are uh, targeting at least one talk per week so that all of you have that follow-up through of the discussion um, of the beauty of this Ayurveda. And last but not the least is the physical exertion. Hmm. So in a sedentary lifestyle, how is the physical exertion happen? Yes, ask me how many are the exercise freak and they push their limits. And there are so many varieties of now, probably in a high intensity exercise and all, and all bodies cannot take it. So if you're overdoing anything, you're putting your uh, physical body to a limit and pushing that, that can be also a trigger factor uh, for a headache. Now, this was just an overview, taking migraine as a base. But I would like to point out, what is that reason? Okay, this is the reason, then why a headache? So with Ayurveda, what happens is the whole body is balanced on just three energy levels. One of the energy levels is Vata. That is, we can loosely translate it as the wind energy. The other is the Pitta. Again, we can loosely translate it as the fire energy. And the third is the Kapha we can again loosely translate as the binding agent in the body. Are they visible to the naked eyes? No, they are at the energy level. They are at the subtle level. They are not visible when they are in their normal scene. When they become abnormal, excess, uh, when they dislodge from their original places, when they grow in abundance and spread everywhere in the body, there are chances that it can be like a visible factor, like a gross material. But predominantly, it is identified from the functions that it does in the body. But the wind energy, how much of it can increase, it can never be seen or identified. But abnormal kapha, abnormal pitta, they can be identified abnormally as a gross material. But in their normalcy, we can't see any of them. So how do we loosely translate the functions in the body? So just to give you a gist, like any movement in the body, whatever moves is only because of the Vayu energy, the wind energy. So probably... Uh, my eyelids are moving, uh, there's a speech of movement, the blood is circulating, uh, the food moving forward, whatever, any movement, heart is pumping, the thought is a movement, all this, all this is governed by the wind energy. Anywhere a digestion process, a metabolism has to happen, a conversion has to happen, all this is dealt with 
pitta energy, the fire energy. It could be moving from one thought to another, it could be a wind energy, but holding a sharp thought, the brilliance of a person, that could be a pitta energy. So, and uh, other part, retention and the memory capacity, that could be like, you know, it binds together, it holds, that could be a kapha type. So the involvement in our memory factor also is with this wind, fire and this kapha type. So basically in our whole body, whatever the functions are happening of our body, either of this vata, pitta or kapha are holding their role or their position. Everything in the body is normal when they are in a good balance. When something or the other, little bit vata more, little bit kapha more or low or pitta, whatever is, there are innumerable, infinite combinations, permutations, where this can go high, low, out of balance in different people, by different reasons. So there are infinite versions of headache. Therefore, there will be infinite versions of solutions. Who says so? Ayurveda says so. So it won't be same medicine for the same person and the same diagnosis. The name can be, let's say, okay, I've said Surya Varta, but the permutation and the combination, that Vata Pitta Kapha, it can go to any permutation combination. So it won't be similar. Even in the same person, it can't be similar headache each time. So that can also change. So for example, let's say staying awake in the night, we say is a cause for the vata to increase. Okay. So from this, the migraine triggers, the first one is a lack of sleep. And let's say spicy uh, meal. And in the in this over here, the second last one is like the skipped meal. So you're fasting or you're not holding. So again, your pitta is going to get triggered over there. Okay. And let's say uh, you are very sluggish or there is the sinuses are just filled. So it can be a kapha type. So in the same body, at different time, you can have different reason why a headache can come. So we cannot say, okay, this patient's headache is this. No, that time when he comes, we'll have to again redo and find out what would be the probable cause. So you see now the beauty of this science because it's a tailor-made prescription for the person who is in front of you. It is not one size fits all. That's why on internet, about Ayurveda, you won't find uh, a good material because the people who would find time to write sitting on uh, um, or a publishing a thing, uh, there is an orientation of modern because unless you don't mix the words that people would understand, the Ayurveda cannot be put forth. So then it is all diluted. But now if you have understood this concept, which I'm trying to put forth, that there is infinite number of prescriptions that can be generated as a cure for a headache, depending upon that person's make of that permutation combination of vata pitta kapha. Let's say somebody is having a night shift, night shift work. Or let's say somebody is not having a or not blessed with a very good boss and who's completely irritating, uh, who's denying the person's right or acknowledging, not acknowledging what the good work is done, can be a constant stress, can be a constant anxiety, which can you know, lead to a, a headache. So in the modern terms, what we can say is the brain, the blood vessel supplying to it, and the nerve supply in and around that, there is some unknown signal exchanging over there, which triggers as a headache and which a person identifies. This we will find as a description in the modern books. But what in Ayurveda books we say is this beyond that, 
this energy level permutation combination because of that person's own doing. What that person is doing that is leading to this headache is like, you know, uh, we'll have to become a James Bond and identify in that person. Okay, so this is just to give you, um, you know, one synopsis of my uh, headache could trigger in a person. Now let's go into a, a little more detail aspect of it. The first one itself is a unique concept of Ayurveda. We don't have this in any of the pathies, any of the sciences. That is suppression of natural urges. This, this is a beautiful concept. Probably um, if the responses are very good, I can take one webinar on just on natural urges. And from the heart disease to cancer, everything is mentioned into this particular. There are 13 of these which you should not suppress when they arise. And there are six of those, which are, if they arise, you must suppress. So the Sanskrit word, just listen and keep in some corner of your mind. The word for the natural urges is called as vega. So V-E-G-A, like how we say in a vegetarian or a vegan without the N into it, vega. Wow. Somebody is unmuted, and I have this mystery how a person can unmute you and I'm muted. Oh, Krishna, help me. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Okay, so suppression of natural edges, we are talking on that. So what are the physical urges? Hmm? Um, Ayurveda books describe there are 13 of those, but I'll just hint like what it could be like an urge. Let's say um, the urge to defecate or the urge to empty your bladder hmm? or urge to sneeze or hunger or thirst exertional breathing these are natural urges physical urges oh, feel like crying and you hold the natural urges in it's coming but you hold like for example now we are in a webinar and if my bladder is full i obviously can't excuse myself because i am only the speaker so now if this natural urge is suppressed means the urge has arised but because of my circumstance, I am not going to release myself, but hold it. This is called suppression of the natural urge. When it is naturally coming, I don't answer that. I suppress it and keep. Wow, it's the best prescription to put all the vata pitta kapha in the body under a great stress and to form a disease so this i'm talking on physical urges level i feel like crying and i don't cry the first symptom is a headache pain in the eye and uh, the beauty is because this is going to go out of our uh, scope but uh, just to highlight like the heart diseases heart attacks tumors are also mentioned in these uh, 13 kinds of natural urges. So physical urges are not to be suppressed when they arise. Okay, so we are talking of physical urges. Then there are six mental urges, which if they come, one needs to suppress. Suppress means not hold it and then suffer internally. <laughs> it can be like that. So it is desire, it is anger, it is jealousy, it is that competitiveness. So Ayurveda says these mental urges one needs to suppress. Suppress means internalize it well and keep your internal balance. 
I've got anger means we say, oh, express it out and finish it out. Uh, no, if it is an anger, then it's ours to suppress it. You are not entitled to express anger according to the Ayurveda rules because you have to hold it. So this holding is called as dharaniya. I'll just give one or two Sanskrit word here and there because uh, some of them who like to hear these to get the authenticity of what I'm speaking. So dharaniya means to hold. And adharaniya means you cannot hold. So there is a clear-cut instruction. What is a dharaniya vega and what is a adharaniya vega? means what is that urge which you need to hold when it arises and what are those urges which you should not hold when they arise. So that's our first cause in the headache. So across all the kinds of headache, suppression of natural urges is the predominant cause. Hmm? I'll give another example. If somebody is having bloated stomach and can't release the air from the stomach and suppressed and kept, it definitely goes upwards. It causes headache. So we call the, the wind into several categories are there, but predominantly as five categories. So that downflow of that wind is called apana vayu. So the nature of the apana is to go down. If it is not allowed to go down, it is a wind. It is movement. It will make its way somewhere and move and release. So when the normal direction of the wind is changed to any side, that's the cause of the disease. In that person, in that body, what is the weaker side? There it goes and lodges. So now we are talking of headache. So probably it's the wind coming towards the head region. But the wind can go maybe to the heart region. Somebody can get discomfort in the heart. Maybe it can go to some muscle or a bone and cause problem and the dryness probably of the discs over there or the bones over there, maybe um, causing some vertebral uh, disc damage or some knee pain, headache, or shoulder pain. So there are innumerable possibilities because that person's body is unique. So are we getting, I just gave one loose example of apana vayu. We should understand how the flow is and the flow. So now tell me which MRI, which CT scan can show the flow of wind cannot be shown. So then what happens? Has Ayurveda not advanced? <laughs> is, Ayurveda is 5,000 years ago, just to put one number, but it is even beyond those 5,000 years ago. And in, you are using the same science now. But now you tell me, has no oh, research happened in Ayurveda? The research can happen only in our minds to understand the depth of what the scriptic language and the rishis have said. Because still there are no machines to identify this movement of apana vayu going in which direction. It can never be found out. So we can understand only from the symptoms and its normal functions. Okay, so this was our first aspect. The second aspect comes as indigestion. Most common symptom that we see, right? Because we most of the time eat wrong things on the, uh, either to please somebody or it's the convenience. Hmm? Uh, one such convenient example, I'll say, like people um, cook for several days, leave it in the refrigerator, and then take little portion and reheat it and eat. You know, it's, a, it's a convenience. <laughs> or uh, in the office, you don't have to eat certain kind of a vegetable or a certain kind of a food, probably it will uh, smell the whole office or uh, probably if you take uh, too much detailed meal, you might feel sleepy in the office. So you take some snack, some convenience, some bread, some sandwich. You know? And this is not one day we go to office, right? It's a daily affair. So on a daily affair, only if our food habits are not correct, 
it's going to lead to indigestion or it could be sometimes happening that a digestive fire is not that powerful but somebody is throwing a party in the office and we eat because it looks delicious appetite is not there the digestive capacity is not there but because the food is there and somebody is throwing a party and you have to join and you'll also like <laughs> so what happens on a small fire a big fuel comes what happens fire extinguishes on a small fire put some smaller fuel what happens it will kindle better so just imagine that uh, log and the fuel and the fire on a small flame big log fire gone small flame put some small twigs make the fire bigger then it can take in a log so we'll always have to remember that same mechanism identify what's the level of our agni what is our digestive capacity how good hungry we are have we digested our previous food why all these topics are important because from this the symptom called of headache which we think that there is some brain chemical unknown reason it goes into some reaction and a headache but these are the known reasons what rishis have seen that triggers the headache okay taking again intake of polluted food it comes on the diet aspect prolonged exposure to the heat and sun many of us have experienced this that you go to a sun uh, go in the sun you get a headache or other way also if it is too cold also some people feel headache and um, again the diet part coming up repeatedly which kind of specific food i've written spicy oily dry salty over here but there are people who they take too much of sweet also they can't digest it if they eat too much of sweet they say they get a headache so for different people the trigger factor from the food will be in infinite ways we will have to definitely identify what that person has to then imbalance uh, emotions also uh, we always have this um, excess of desires we always uh, so shadripu is the six enemies so sorry I, one sanskrit word has slipped into the presentation uh, unknowingly so kama is uh, the desire shadripu are the six enemies the uh, six enemies of the mind a uh, krodha is the anger i'm so sorry for uh, putting um, those words instead of just writing excessive desires the anger matsarya is a jealousy uh, jealousy the competitiveness that i should uh, be there and what happens um, the definition over there of jealousy is very fantastic it says somebody is having good qualities but just because you don't like that person you are jealous of that person you don't see the good qualities and you see bad in the goodness that is the definition given of matsarya you see bad of a person's good quality because because <laughs> it's jealousy shoka shoka means sorrow you are very sad sadistic person so all these kinds of emotions they cause stress on the mind that strain leads to headache and many times people don't like to acknowledge that that emotion is in them so uh, the concept is there in ayurveda the modern will not have this concept so identifying that cause is not going to go at this deeper level modern will have the concept of stress and strain can cause a headache anxiety can cause a headache this would be there in the modern books also but the stress and anxiety source to dig to acknowledge by the person and the doctor also feeling to acknowledge that okay this kind of emotion is triggering this this in detail uh, you find you uh, know as a usp of ayurveda only let's uh, Uh, i have to keep uh, be mindful of the time i'm so sorry yes 
yeah now comes the trigger factors so in the lifestyle where are our vices so here it leads the list the, the most common is this alcohol and smoking yeah, definitely um, even in the clinic i see uh, when women folk come or oh, oh, i've had uh, one or two glasses of wine and uh, last night so it's a headache they do come they do say uh, they have identified the cause but if you ask okay don't drink wine no that's not going to be possible so again the next weekend is going to come and again they are going to visit your clinic um, or oh, doctor please settle this problem off so no doctor is going to <laughs> say don't come and only an ayurveda doctor can probably strictly say for this same reason i don't want to see you again you stop your alcohol only an ayurveda doctor will say but otherwise the yeah, other doctor okay you come please <laughs> keep coming uh, my pocket is filling with your vices so vices is one such thing where the person who manufactures it is only you know a beneficiary of doing it rest everybody it's a problem for them whoever purchases making the person who has made it rich but you spend your own pocket money uh, to say okay welcome disease number 1 welcome disease number 2 so today is the perspective of headache but there are so many other things what happens to your liver what happens to your mind what happens to your cholesterol what happens to your heart to your digestion all that physical and uh, the spiritual aspect says um, you incur a sin of it so sin is something we call as adrishta you, know? you you don't see that so you need not believe so it is only a perspective so we can't tell that but why is it a sin because it you are not benefiting out of it it is not doing any good to any organ in your body only that manufacturer has earned his lifetime and getting richer day by day with each bottle that is sold or each packet that is sold so needless to say even if that statutory warning would be there it is injurious to health uh, nobody cares everybody can read it very well but you still go and spend your money but that is our trigger factor in our today's topic for headache it is a trigger factor tomorrow if i'm going to talk on cancer then for the cancer also i'm going to say these factors are trigger factors why so many cancer patients are there that lifestyle and the product that we use and what we are doing to our body Mm, in the name of pleasure and convenience we have conveniently forgotten and then we question why so many cancers and why headache is so common so i'm taking the mildest of the symptom and a major of a problem as well then sometimes you know with the ayurveda and sometimes even with homeopathy they say okay you should not drink tea or coffee because of the smell you know and if the person suddenly stops comes next day running no i just can't follow so they prefer not to go for ayurveda or homeopathy because the restriction will come and if the tea coffee stop the headache will come so we'll have to identify how badly the person is addicted to tea and coffee and before we give any such restriction whether it's um, it's going to be a doable scene or not because you are treating something and then uh, another problem has to uh, will be created so we have to be very careful to whom we say do and don't so it might be ideal for the disease but it might not be ideal for the patient because you went to solve some problem and uh, you have multiplied another symptom and come hormonal changes many of us experience that time of the month where yes it's better our children and our husbands don't talk to us otherwise everybody had it so yes sometimes the hormonal changes do create a very bad headache it can be as a precursor to the actual day of the cycle or it can also be um, during the cycle some cases also feel after the menstrual cycle is over then yeah irregular sleep pattern it's coming again and again too much sleep or no sleep at all both are problematic yeah if you sleep too long lot of kapha you have generated if you have not slept at all a lot of vata you have generated either way the symptom is a headache symptom physical stress 
we do too much of uh, exercise. Um, the labors carry a lot of weight. Overworking, that's also, uh, means if you physically stress the body, that can lead to a headache. Then stimulation of sense organs, most commonly seen. Talking loudly can be a trigger factor for somebody's headache. Irritation that comes with a noise. Hmm? Bright light, you just can't stand into maybe a mall. Uh, or even a screen, uh, too much screen time is also a problem. And then fasting. A lot of people ask intermittent fasting somebody is doing let me also copy my god in the sixth hour itself <laughs> cannot withstand the hunger headache comes and because somebody is doing and you have announced in your friend circle you try to do that intermittent fasting it doesn't suit so intermittent fasting might be good but for your body it is good or not we will have to find out so it is not the same yardstick for all so any of these diet fads coming don't do because you're friend is doing it and you feel also coolly she's fasting so maybe I can also do it doesn't happen like that each body has a different make each mental strength is a different the intention and the purpose is also different so um, I like to give an example but just few weeks ago just one week ago uh, my spiritual master had come so then for the knowledge that he gives to be keep the mind alert, um, I thought, okay, I can hold a fast. So somebody said, oh, you are on a fruit diet. So now fast is a different for that intention. And a fruit diet, when you say, that's going to be a different. So the intention of a fruit diet is probably you want to detoxify, you want to lose weight, you... So when you are doing it for yourself and you call that a diet, that is so superficial. It may sustain or may not sustain because everybody is going to eat the yummiest food. Then your diet is gone. But now you have hold it for a higher purpose. Okay, for the spiritual purpose you are doing. Then whatever comes in front, it is, it is not a distraction. Right? So intention also, body capacity also. And for you know what is the outcome you are looking for all this would come otherwise a headache is the first symptom on the first day of the whatever diet or a fast that you are going to take and of course needless to say the anxiety and the stress that would come along with it okay now having just given all this overview in different shades of what ayurveda is saying now let's come to the solution aspect of it. Now we know there is so much to do with the lifestyle. What would be the external aspects of the therapy we will first see? Definitely when we talk about the head, we are going to do treatment for the head on the external aspects. The most common therapies are applying something on the head. So applying something is called as Shiro Lepa. So Shiro is the head and Lepa is you give a lip. So whether you want to do it on the forehead or you want to do it actually on the head depends upon that person. And there are several ingredients that we can use. I have written just for example as a sandalwood. But let's say if the person is having a nasal congestion and a headache because of that sinus congestion, you definitely can't use uh, sandalwood. You will multiply the problem. So then something like an aquarius calamus or let's say dry ginger powder against that kapha aspect. So to identify the dosha, whether it's the vata, pitta or a kapha, the wind, the fire or the kapha, the binding agent. First, we have to identify that. Without that knowing, you can't say, okay, sandalwood taste good for headache. No, it's a poison for a sinus person. You cannot use sandalwood over there. Mm? So likewise, there's another beautiful treatment called as Shiro Dhara. So Dhara means a flow. Flow, a stream. So that means the material has to be a liquid material. So in uh, Ayurveda, three prominent materials are used and accordingly, the names change. 
if you use um, oil as a material to flow on your forehead it is called as a taila shirodhara so taila taila is the oil with the oil later then if you uh, mix some medications in the milk and you prepare a milk and that you are pouring on the forehead then it is called as kshira dhara hmm? kshira means milk and the middle one the takra if you use buttermilk that means the yogurt when added with four to six times of water and you churn the yogurt you get rid of all the butter from that and then you add some medications uh, decoctions and then you pour um, this buttermilk then it's called as takra dhara so dhara is a flow and depending upon what is the ingredient the name changes and which ingredient to use on which condition is going to be you know the the doctor's expertise so it can't you know sometimes it will confuse even the best experts of ayurveda to do it as a oh, vata katha or a pitta vata or a pitta katha what is the permutation combination the more history you get from the person the more you see the person your diagnosis evolves so that keenness in the ayurveda uh, doctor it comes only with experience so maybe the percentage and the marks of that doctor will be higher but the number of patients seen uh, that i and um, how much under somebody under some great vaidya like how we have to acquire our spiritual knowledge under one great guru or when we do some yoga we need so many yoga teachers are there but most of them are like you know the exercise teachers but the real real yoga you get only from few so like that that real real ayurveda physician it's not going to come by reading over the internet you will have to physically <laughs> undergone through a great master and personally seen so many patients then it's possible to diagnose and come to the ingredient that you are using um, yes ayurveda doesn't have any side effect side effect but it will have wrong effect if you do wrongly so where you have to as i gave the example of sandalwood you can't use a sandalwood so like that some cases you can use kshira dhara some cases you cannot use some cases you cannot use takra dhara so one person should know and it is not a random choice why i am saying this because many of you would also come to the clinic don't want to see the doctor but pick uh, it as a spa menu or a beauty salon menu okay today i have done this <laughs> tomorrow or the next week let me do this treatment so it is not funny to uh, select the treatment of your choice because you want to experience it because that's playing with your energy whether you need it or not that has to be decided like antibiotic just for fashion you don't eat it right because last time i had amoxicillin now you give me ciprofloxacin and if you say like that doctor will say do you need it or what for what's wrong with you it's exactly the same thing whether you need which kind of a treatment let the doctor decide let your internet knowledge your google knowledge not decide it for you then something called as a kaval and gandusha in simple words it means oil pulling so you hold the oil uh, for some time that's one part or you swish the oil from one end to other which oil medicated oils are there several depending upon that condition the doctor would advise shirovasti is one very solid treatment more intense than the shirodhara where like a chef's cap um, a cap is placed over the head and it's nicely pasted and again medicated oil is poured and the person retains that oil for some time from anything as minimum as 15 to 20 minutes to maximum of 45 minutes and nasyam the most crucial and a very beautiful treatment where you put certain ingredients in the nostril in a particular fashion so that ingredient can be in the oil format it can be in a dry powder format it can be a juice um of some herb 
as simple as maybe a tulasi, the basil leaf, or any other kind of material that needs to be poured in a certain way in the nose. It's not just, okay, you lie down and you pour. There is some preparation done where the oil is applied, where a fermentation is done, a particular position of neck is placed. So these are all very serious remedies which Ayurveda offers uh, for headache. There are other minor uh, therapies also, like as I've said, Snehana Swedana just now, but it comes under, not minor, sorry, some major therapies like a Panchakarma, we do it. So Nasyam comes as a form of a Panchakarma. And the number three over here, it's called as Virechana, where you prepare the body in certain way. Some oil or ghee is given um, in an increasing quantity. The body is prepared uh, so that all the toxins are loosened and you then do the steam where those toxins, they get the movement from every nook and corner of the body to the stomach. And then you give the oral medicine and person purges. So this is called as virechana. That's like a complete detoxification to get rid of headache. Any headaches cured by panchakarma, they don't reoccur. Of course, you follow a certain lifestyle and don't create more toxins in the body. So panchakarma is that type of a treatment where you get rid of the doshas, the aggravated doshas from the body permanently and cleanse the body. So you don't have to have that as a monthly headache or a weekly headache affair and pop in a pill. So something, some you have to seriously consider this. Another is the basti treatment where the route to administer would be the anal route and the doshas will come out by the anal route. I can loosely translate it as enema, but it is not an enema because when we say enema, we think, oh, it's stomach cleanse. It's not that. It is, again, to remove the aggravated dosha and particularly the vata dosha. So, Vayu, we saw that apana vayu, you know, going here and there. To bring the apana's movement downwards, this is going to be a best treatment. And dhoma pana, we all said no for the smoking. Of course, that was a tobacco one. But the medicated smoke, as you see in the picture, is called as the dhuma pana. That's one of the best solutions. After the nasya treatment, if we do, then uh, the headache cured by this kind of a treatment also doesn't uh, reoccur. Now let's have a quick look at some home remedies that we can do. Uh, like a jasmine leaf uh, or a pomegranate tender leaves, if we make them into swarasa, that means if we extract the juice out of it, then one or two drops or even maybe not more than three drops in each nostril, if you put, we can have a, a headache, uh, let's say from a pitta predominant, the pounding sharp burning pain can come down. Durva is um, that type of a grass which uh, Lord Ganesha likes. So if you have seen those thin uh, grass, so Sidon, Dactylon, with licorice, uh, so that we can give internally. So again, um, very easy to do in Singapore. Durva is easily available uh, in the all flower shops in Little India. Drinking coriander seed water is a, a very doable thing. It pacifies the pitta in the body. Uh, eating some soaked almonds, raisins um, is a, another doable remedy where you don't keep uh, your tummy empty and you nourish, uh, you do some brumhana chikitsa, we call that. For us, we have got one very exciting remedy, which is from a book, uh, I should not say book, sorry, which is from a scripture called as Yoga Ratnakar and also in Bhaisya Ratnavari. So these are very ancient scriptures, not man-made scriptures. So in that one reference camp where you can mix saffron with the ghee and then instill it in your nose uh, as a remedy for a very bad headache. And then as we have seen the lay firms applying various face of either you take dry ginger powder if the kapha aspect is too much like in a sinus case or a sandalwood powder if it is a headache out of too much of heat going out in the sun or body is having um, a lot of pitta in the body. 
last but not the least, we should always know how we have to breathe. I would probably take a different uh, class on um, a webinar on um, different kinds of pranayam because this is uh, one thing of my forte where it comes as my prescription with all the patients. It's always not the medicine uh, that you have to consume um, to get better. Sometimes it's uh, these, even the way you breathe uh, can change um, the direction of the vayu in your body and balance uh, and create a balance. Um, so um, let me not get into this because uh, I don't have enough time, but I'll come back on the ways to breathe and probably we take a webinar on pranayam. But uh, just hold on to only the first one for now because I don't want you to go empty-handed. Breathing deeply with awareness and completeness. Just forget the count. Going in. Coming down. With the mind and the breath together. And when you do that with closed eyes, it forms a meditation, which we call this as a mindful uh, meditation. So, uh, some techniques are so very simple. Like as I'm talking to you, sitting in the webinar, I can just go with deep breathing when I'm listening. So if uh, my mind is with my breath, there is change in the nadis. The energy changes. There are the unseen nadis. So the nerves which we can see, but there are some which are so subtle. Uh, if I'm going to say Eda or Pingala, then I don't know which uh, scan is going to reveal uh, that nadi. So I've just said the gross aspect, but there are so many subtle nadis, channels in the body that get nourished with our mind focused just on our breath. I'll only summarize pranayam for the lack of time, only so much, but there are different ways that you would do. How would you hold your fingers and direct the wind flowing from one nostril to another, inhaling and exhaling. How you direct it through the mouth by uh, in a closing the tongue. How you close your eyes and nose and how you breathe. How you do a forceful breathing. How you use your hands and then breathe in out forcefully. So there are different techniques even in breathing. Uh, but for now, as a takeaway, you just hold on to mindful awareness. There are different yoga postures which can cure headache. So again, I would briefly just touch this topic. Some postures uh, you repeat in a rhythmic way. Don't make yoga as an exercise. Let the heart rate reduce. You should not be tired. You should feel relaxed after a good one hour a yoga session. And then um, there are combinations, some asanas which you do in standing position, some you do in sitting position, lying down in the back and lying down on the tummy. So I'll not again touch this because you would need a help of a teacher to tell you directly. But for now, you just take it as a, um, what you can carry is what we think yoga that you need flexibility of a body is not a criteria to uh, do a yoga. It's a byproduct that you would get a flexibility. But just uh, trying to stretch the body or trying to come in that position is also good enough because eventually by doing it, the byproduct, you will see the flexibility of the body. But what we are targeting is this flow of energy, uninterrupted flow of the vata energy. Last but not the least, irritated mind. The mind that holds so much of anger, desires, it needs to calm down somewhere. Okay, There are different ways and techniques of meditation. Right now, I would associate it with breathing and closing eyes. Just doing that. You don't have to sit in the lotus pose as she is sitting. You just sit on your sofa. No need to even cross your legs. Just be comfortable even on the chair of your office. Just take some time. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your mind on your breath. Feel every breath that is coming in. When you let out breath, feel that breath going out. Sit for five minutes. I'll talk this as a meditation. 
but there are deeper aspects of meditation and the most deepest is you revel on the thought of oneness so that's going to be the highest kind of meditation and the purpose of the meditation is the knowledge that you have collected you chew that again again and where the differences shut so that's the spiritual the last kind of medica- uh, meditation but for now uh, we can just say like a, even a open eyed meditation where you are just mindful you are walking and that kind of a meditation so depending upon where our level is we need to take what is solution for our headache that we have to identify people can do several things people can be masters of several things but that is not our goal of what people are doing what i have to benefit and what is my capacity this should be our starting point so some quick tips and i wind up over here you should definitely have a good and a complete sleep that is the criteria number 1 and what i mean by good and a complete complete if i'm saying 8 hours it doesn't mean from morning uh, 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock it's not that good it means at the correct timing 10 10:30 you should try to hit the bed latest is your 11 o'clock get up early at least 48 minutes before the local sunrise hmm? don't do fasting if you are having a headache issue never fast don't keep your tummy empty oh there is a typo over there m is missing in the perfume use a mild perfume if uh, that creates a good mood for you but it's not a good solution for people who get headache by any kind of odor kitchen smell perfume smell office smell taxi smell there are so many trigger mrt smell there are so many trigger factors so this number 3 might not be valid for all but the pitta type of people a uh, small jasmine sandalwood the uh, some um, acholi they they have a very calming effect on the mind the time to quit vices is now so i will insist again and again in uh, probably all my lectures those are uh, having alcohol those are smoking uh, if this lecture has helped or inspired you or given some knowledge to you and you are smoking please stop it right away because it's not worth it's not doing anything good to you except for the person who is manufacturing it then if you are uh, prone for heat and just be careful either you avoid going out in the sun otherwise carry an umbrella place like singapore umbrella is you need either for the sun or for the rain because both are unpredictable thing over here use a good sun glass protect your eyes because the light that enters irritates so make sure that you are taking care of your pitta aspects exercise i would say only in the morning i see people are running in the afternoon also i see people running in the midnight also and that's a straining the physical body so ayurveda doesn't actually encourage there is a you know there is a time for everything uh, you can't say okay i've not uh, i've woken up now at 11 o'clock let me have my breakfast now breakfast time is over now go and have your lunch directly you can't say at 4 o'clock i've missed my lunch now let me have my lunch it's gone so exercise time you've missed in the morning it's gone so better not lose that hour in the morning otherwise you will be searching it for the rest of the day and you'll never get that one hour ventilate the room very nicely just avoid all the bright sounds and lights and so all those places good to avoid only and uh, just give some time for yourself we think our time means our mobile time do fasting of the mobile so i have a very good friend who fast mobile on monday she closes the mouth she doesn't talk neither uses any of the devices on every monday but that's a long call we can at least do one hour or two hours or few hours whatever is and definitely not just before we go to bed and don't miss oil application so much of snehana and oiling we have spoken about just conquer that wind by oiling oiling is the best way to reverse your aging process last but not the least we end this session with a beautiful prayer for everyone 
those who are around us, all of us, let's be very happy. Let's never fall sick. Let our body be disease-free. Let us see only goodness in others. And let there be no sorrow for anyone. I'll chant this verse and uh, we conclude. And if there are any questions, I'll take those questions. Om Sarve Bhavam Tu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyamtu Makashchitukha Bhagbhavet Om Shanti 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 Thank you everyone. It's open for questions. If you have any questions, please do type. Thank you, Aryan, for appreciating the slides. Anybody has any questions or doubts? Maybe I can. No, Dr. Vasha, I think there's actually a question in the chat. Um, there's a question, let me check. How do we do self abhyanga? Okay, self abhyanga is just oiling. What you can do? Mm -hmm. Take some coconut oil on the palm of your hand and just put it on the head. Take some more oil, rub it on your palms and then gently massage the scalp, very gently with your fingertips. How much time it will take? Just five minutes. Then warm up some sesame oil, the gingerly oil. And then just take, dip your both hands gently on the joints, go circular, long, circular, long downward direction because now we know vata's direction is downward it's not like this so people have no, the direction of the massage should be towards the heart but in ayurveda the oil application is a way we have some powder applications and all that is towards upward direction because that is for the kapha but what we are trying to manage is vata vata's main seat is uh, one of the seat is skin so you are conquering the vayu of the entire body because skin is the biggest organ in the body. So on the joints, going gently circular, then going downwards again and gently applied. So it's not essential that somebody has to do and you will feel good and ha about it. No, it's clear cut only lubrication aspect. How much time it will take? Not more than 10 minutes to apply on the whole body. You wear your robe, Go and do whatever you have to fix. Breakfast for the family. Uh, sit and read your newspaper. Wait for about 30 minutes if you have 30 minutes. You can wait more up the maximum up to one or two hours. Not more than that. And then take a warm sh uh, bath, shower to wipe or remove the oil. So the head oil, we don't heat. The body oil, we make it slightly warm. And while removing, the water also has to be warm. I hope, Shobaji, I have answered your question. I get cluster headache behind both the eyes when I have indigestion. How to? Yes. See, you have said uh, the reason, the cause. It's indigestion. So now, Sandhyaji, what you have to do is identify what food is causing indigestion. Uh, so those food you should avoid. Then you should take some medication to have a very good digestive fire so that you don't land into indigestion. There are people who have constipation. If they don't go uh, for, they don't evacuate their bowels, they will get headache. So this indigestion, constipation, these are the trigger factors. So I'm so glad you are aware that uh, this is the cause and this is leading to my cluster headache. So now it becomes very easy. Uh, some foods, uh, let's say, uh, I'll give an example of a dry ginger salad where you just take one inch of a ginger, you grate it, put some rock salt, put some lemon into it. Take it 15-20 minutes before your uh, lunch. 
what will happen you will not land up into indigestion it will ignite enough fire so that you can digest it well. i'm not sure whether you are a diabetic or not but otherwise the most common medicine you can keep at home is something called as dashamula arishta and jeera ka arishta it should be on our shelf uh, it's not advised for the diabetic people and those who have any allergies of alcohol so we said no alcohol but now we have got some medicine which has got some percentage of alcohol it's little sweet but a very handy medicine in case of indigestion but i have just said it very loosely i'll have to find out whether you can take a arishtam kind of a medicine which is alcohol based or do you need a kashayam kind of a medicine which is a decoction a little bitter based medicine Uh, and any more questions thank you lakshmi ji for appreciating yes there are three more sessions coming uh, please do join um any more questions did i answer all the questions uh, dr vasha there's actually a few more questions in the chat okay so now uh, for aryan it is this yes, uh, difficult times and the causes headache back of the yeah so to relieve the stress and uh, so many people have faced so many things first it was all the covid then the post impact of the covid and the personal relations uh, so many things the financial situations then people undergo because of something so what we have to do is two things the how body has to be physically strong and uh, um, the immunity should be strong to keep the diseases away likewise the mind has to be strong all of us at some point or the other in life we get into a difficult time and sometimes it is not at all our fault it is because of something we are not able to get through something most common thing uh, would be a personal loss it could be relationship issue it could be a financial issue uh, these thing bother the most so you will have to increase immunity of the mind there has to be a spiritual fall back a spiritual fall back gives us a strength strength to see the world in his power in my power i am small and weak in whichever religion we belong to there has to be a spiritual fall back to see through that issue if it's a relationship issue are we able to separate that relationship and see through the eye of forgiveness whether it's a separation issue we if the person is not getting along it's easy to let go rather than forcefully hold on with magnanimity is there a financial issue always say this is not the end of it this is you will overcome every situation every situation can be overcome with fortitude so the mental immunity has to begin a small spiritual practice has to be developed some good exercise regimen has to be come so when the mind and the even the physical body is uh, put to use the mind will come to a certain rest it has to go in tandem i hope uh, aryana have answered your question <coughs> medicine wise it's very difficult to advise but uh, one small medicine i can suggest uh, there is one beautiful medicine called as jatamamsi in english it is called as tagara uh, probably um, you can just google it even himalaya uh, has that so i'm not actually particular of any brand but you can get it as uh, loose medicines also uh you can have a little bit of jatamamsi in the night and if you're not allergic to milk uh, some uh boil the milk with two pinches of nutmeg powder uh, in hindi they call jaifal or in tamil they call or malayalam they call jatakya so the nutmeg powder boiled with warm milk two pinches 
and you have this little bit of jatamamsi either you get in a capsule format or loose jatamamsi uh, the stress will uh, reduce the anxiety it will go but for a detailed medicines for the mind i'll definitely have to see you personally but uh, without uh, knowing anything this won't cause you any effect as long as you can digest the uh, milk thank you aryan for your question uh, salina raj my headache will start in early in the morning and it will and be in the lower part of my head and you have not mentioned <coughs> whether it subsides with the day so if it is subsiding with the day then we saw that part as a type of a migraine and uh, if it's in just on the lower part of the head and that is both the sides i'm assuming so it uh, looks more like a pitta kind of a headache for you but without seeing or knowing your pulse or more details and just guessing so in this case if it is starting with the day and you are not having any sinus issues you're not sneezing then the further cooling suggestions we can apply over the but if you are having those then that is contraindicated you can just type in with a little more information whether you have or any sinus issue and you feel excess heat or it and shobha as how do we get the details about the next three session please uh, okay so you are in the email list i think so uh, or else um, you can type your email um, in another q and a boxes there so that you don't want to do it publicly i'll keep that in mind and uh, if you have my uh, or probably can can you put uh, nafeel's um, email id so that people can get in touch with you asking for the next session details we'll put the nafeel uh, email id for you Okay, Sandhya Ji says uh, the second arista I said was Jira Kadya arista, Dashamula arista, and Jira Kadya arista. Each fifteen fifteen ml after lunch and dinner would be a good choice for you. Sajita says, "Ma'am, nowadays I have low blood pressure. I also have migraine. What should I do?" Hmm. So, blood pressure, migraine, both again on a similar lines. A treatment first we and you are not diabetic i assume sajita can you type whether you are diabetic or not okay shobha's email i have received and i think everybody has got info at an appeal academy please get in touch to get the next week's uh, webinar so every week we are going to have them okay sajita you are not diabetic fine so what i can do a quick remedy for the pressure to be okay is you take a glass of cold water you squeeze a lemon into it you add coconut sugar palm sugar any version of sugar say about 2 to 3 spoons and you put 2 to 3 pinches of salt into it put one or two strands of saffron if you can afford more you can put some more saffron into it and add some two or three pinches of cardamom powder mix this very nicely and have you will not have uh, the low pressure related light headedness and your migraine also would get solved if you feel lot of heat in the body just do a simple thing there is a powder medicine called as rasnadi churnam you can mix that with rose water and apply on your forehead sajita so it would be a very good solution and if you need some more detail consultation please write to the email given uh, and we can fix some tele consultations uh, for people who want tele consultations uh we can do that in great detail so that we can i can give you a specific um remedy for the problem i think i have answered all the questions now uh, anything so people can actually unmute uh, to if i have missed somebody and not taken the okay you can drink whenever you feel low sajit 
So whenever you feel the uh, problem is there, at that time you make it. So it's irrespective of before or after food. It is at the time when you have the headache. I think uh, all the questions I have answered now, Ken. Yeah, Dr. Vasha, there's actually one uh, attendee who actually raised up, uh, she saw her hand, uh, aroma. Oh, person who has raised a... Uh, yeah, so, so oh. raise a hand, uh, maybe, oh. maybe uh, he or she has a question. Okay, so Arumal can uh, unmute and ask the question. Or you can type your question, Arumal. I don't know. It was by mistake. Okay. Any more questions? Awesome. I can't thank enough for this uh, amazing um, patience and um, the way you all have uh, held on, even if we are uh, 20 minutes uh, late. Um, if you have to say anything, you can always unmute. We have concluded our uh, session. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Vasha, there's actually a question, uh, earlier question by Aryan. Uh, so if someone suffers from a headache at work or in a situation where it's not possible to visit a practitioner, is there any generic Ayurvedic tablet or medicine one can consume for a timely relief? At the moment, I take... Can I just take a screenshot of this? Variant whenever okay. I suffer from mild to severe headache. Okay. And if the headache, it's a generic headache and you're not able to see a doctor, then for tentative uh, thing, I can suggest a couple of uh, solutions. We've got um, this very, very good powder called as Rasnadi Churnam. Mark that. It comes by a manufacturer called as Kotakal. Uh, from South India, but you can Google the name uh, Ras Nadi Churnam. Kotakal would be a very ideal company. Now, depending upon what is your condition, let's say you've got a headache that day because you've exposed to sun a lot. Then this Ras Nadi Churnam, you mix rose water and you apply like a uniform paste on your forehead. Leave it like that for about half an hour to 45 minutes and your headache should go. But let's say it's because you're sneezing a lot, you have got congestion and all. That same Rasnati Churnam, you can mix a dry ginger juice or fresh ginger juice into it. Squeeze out the ginger juice, mix that water and you apply it. So it will absorb all the excess phlegm and uh, you will feel better. Now let's say you are not sure what could be the reason it's with the heat or it's with the phlegm or it, but the headache is there. You just mix plain warm water into it, into that rasnadi powder, apply like a uniform paste. When I say uniform paste means from one temple to another, from one side and to the whole, it should come like a uniform paste. And a even thickness, not too thick, because when you use something like a ginger juice and all, and if you don't have a phlegmatic condition, then you will get burning sensation. So you will have to be uh, careful uh, when you are using uh, this thing. So this is as the external aspect. Then for the nose, you can use, uh, there is one very, uh, if you can get a very good quality cow ghee. Hmm? Uh, so uh, in uh, India, the Indian cow, is, the gheer cow is, cow is very famous. So if you get a gheer cow's ghee, then you can put two, two uh, drops of the ghee in each nostril. And that you can do as a daily basis to uh, prevent a, a headache from coming. Same ghee is applied on your navel region and same ghee is applied on the sole of your feet, sole of the feet. So these three places you need to oil to prevent a headache. And in worse come worse uh, condition, if you have to have to take a tablet because uh, the thing is very bad, then a loose prescription, if I have to suggest something for you uh, to take, then uh, the same Cortical company has got a very good uh, tablet uh, called as a Migra Cot. 
so m i g r a k o t you can take two tablets before breakfast 30 minutes and two tablets uh, before dinner 30 minutes that means four tablets per day you can have that and uh, there are so many actually medicines but when i can see a person or you can come in for a teleconsult or something then i can suggest uh, more solutions because this is ayurveda's forte to deal with uh, the headache and last but not the least i had mentioned about um, the nutmeg milk uh, solution so that calms the mind so if your headache is because of that just have a practice of having nutmeg milk with little bit of jata mamsi powder or a capsule from that you can get locally from wherever you are uh, have i missed any questions skin uh, dr vasha there's actually a question by salina in the q and a bot okay, check that box yeah the the q and a bot uh, no sinus and it will persist for the full day sometimes bp also will be high okay so that means your headache is related to your uncontrolled blood pressure is what i'm understanding so um you definitely need to have some ayurvedic medicines to lower your blood pressure and um, you'll have to monitor your sleep pattern also and probably you are worrier by nature if you're thinking too much so that can also be because if you are a known blood pressure uh, patient uh, that means you're taking already a modern medication which is not helping you uh, good enough uh, in that qna box if you uh, can just type quickly what is your normal reading i'm uh, awaiting your answer salina ji in your in the qna box you can just say normally your blood pressure reading goes what or also you can unmute and tell okay so that's quite high and uh, you are taking um, uh, modern medicines right uh, yes or no hi vasha ji salina here Okay, so you are taking modern medications for no, your. No, no, no. I didn't start it. Okay, so so that is the reason why your headache is it's a. You definitely need attention on this and the numbers that you have uh, typed over there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll suggest one medication. You try that for two weeks. Check your uh, pressure again, and get in touch uh, with me again. We can do a teleconsult. but not to neglect the situation the reading which you have typed shows um, it's not a controlled uh, blood pressure okay. so in that same chat box i'm going to type one uh, um, could you just type your answer over there again in the qna i'll type some medicine name because i can't say that uh, publicly the reason is uh, okay ma'am i will it will be miss and i'm yeah. just typing i'm just typing the uh, name of the medicine for you over there okay. just give me a minute again this is from uh, kotakal itself okay. some medicines which we can't uh, say publicly uh, sorry everybody else it's get so sorry varsha ji i will contact okay, so, you personally uh, uh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. so this Yeah, sure. So this uh, medicine you can take two tablets two times after food. Do this okay. for two uh, two weeks and then okay. get in touch with. Okay. Okay. And again, it's available with Cotecal. Okay. Okay, Sajita ji, if you are also having sinus issues, swollen eyes, heavy eyes, definitely Rasnadi Junam with ginger. You definitely need because this is a typical. a uh, classical symptom that you say a uh, swollen face with heavy eyes and all so you definitely you try rasnadi with ginger otherwise please get in touch with me for a teleconsultation uh, and i am available except on wednesdays and uh, sundays okay so i think uh, it was a elaborately answer question answer session uh, with your permission shall we end this session If anybody has to speak anything, all can unmute uh, at this time now. Thank you.
Thank you, Varsha ji, for your time. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Varsha ji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you, Varsha ji. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ken. I think we can end the session now. Thank you, Dr. Vasha. Let me end the session.